Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle. This is part two of my haul from the past few weeks. This is what I found this past weekend and the week before. Um, I got a lot of stuff to show you guys, so I'm just going to get started. Uh, not this weekend, but the weekend before, there were about a thousand community sales. There's no way I could possibly hit them all, but I did the best I could. And picked up this Stangle uh, Amber Glow, that's the name of the pattern, pitcher. This, unfortunately, it's a second, as you can see right there. Um, but the only thing wrong with it, really, is it has kind of a little dip in the lip here and there's a little bit of discoloration here but it should still sell right now I have it up at $20 I might have to reduce that down to 10 but you know like I said only paid a buck there used to be a Stangle um, factory here in town so there's a lot of those pieces floating around this area um, got this coffee mug this London themed mug from Samson Souvenirs, designed in Great Britain. Looks like it's never been used. Got that for 50 cents. Got this Harley Davidson. It's a little biker mug. Has a little key on the bottom. From 1998, paid a dollar for this. Have a bid on this right now of 9.99. With a couple people watching, so it might go a little bit higher. Picked up three bags of costume jewelry. There's a couple pieces I could probably sell individually in here, and then the rest I can either sell as a lot or give some of the beads to my mom. She makes jewelry. Uh, let's see. Picked up this really nice cleaver. You see my shirt in the background. Um, all right, now you can't see the name. It says Rowoko right there. R-O-W-O-C-O -O -O. and it's from France and I'm going to move it out of the way because the glare is killing me but it's a real nice heavyweight piece that has a full tang goes all the way through the handle I paid a dollar fifty I have a bid on it right now of nine ninety nine with a few people watching it it should go up to twenty or thirty hopefully uh, I started it a little bit low to see if it would go anywhere. I probably should have started at 20. This, I also found at that same sale. This is a Sharp EL8113 scientific calculator. This is an old one. Can't find a date on it. I think it's from like the early 80s. It does. Oops. Oh, I took the batteries out, but it does work. And has the case, has the instructions, has everything. Paid a dollar fifty, have a bid on it right now of nineteen ninety nine from some guy in Romania. And um few watchers on this, so I'm hoping that'll go up also. This was a good find. This is a set of Wonder Woman DVDs. Uh, I think this is, I think it was only on for three seasons, so I think this is all of it. Seasons one, two, and three. They are opened and, you know, gently used, but they're all in really good shape. And they're also all double-sided DVDs. So I sold these just a few minutes ago. In my last video, you might have heard my phone make a ka-ching sound. That was these selling. I had them up for $35.99 with free... I think medium mail shipping. So I made about 32 on these and I paid a dollar fifty for the lot. Um, just one thing I wanted to share with you guys about buying DVDs and this really only applies if you're selling them internationally. There is and watch I'm not gonna be able to find it now. Right, I'll try it on this one. There we go. All DVDs are coded by region. And like I said, that only applies if you're selling internationally. The USA and Canada are Region 1, and you can see here it says 1. Uh, all other parts of the world are coded with different numbers. What that means is, is that 
that particular DVD will only play on DVD players in that region. So if you went overseas on vacation and you bought a DVD and you brought it back home, chances are it's not going to work in your DVD player. Um, the reason that I'm telling you guys this is because I had a buyer from Indonesia ask me about these, how much he wanted a shipping rate. I told him what the shipping would be, but then I also made him aware that they were Region 1 coded DVDs and that unless he had a region free DVD player, which they do exist, um, that he probably wouldn't be able to get these to work. So that's just some something to keep in mind if you guys sell things out of the country. This was a good find. I bought one of these last year at a sale and did really well with them. I think I had 23 cars or 24 cars and I sold it for like $70. This is the Cars Racetrack carrying case and I got all these cars inside of it. I think there's 16 or 17 something like that. Uh, I have a bid on it right now for uh, $24.99. I paid five for everything and I made sure that I put in the title that the lot included this car which is Lizzie and this, this is Stanley the statue who is the founder of um, Radiator Springs these alone together should make like ten to fifteen dollars so I put them in here and made sure I put their names in the title hoping that that would drive the price up so we'll see what happens okay I think oh no I got this to show you this I got for I think a dollar fifty this is just a really really pretty mug in a matching tin it says butterfly cupcake really girly kind of tea party looking mug from the Leonardo collection. So I have a watcher but no bids yet. But I know as soon as my daughter sees it she's gonna want to keep it so if no one buys it that might be hers. Alright I'm trying to see if there's anything else before I show you all the stuff I bought from one house. Oh there's this. I bought this from the last sale that I went to that day as I was driving home. I almost didn't buy it. I'm glad that I did. This is a Nordic Wear set of lollipop molds. It makes all these lollipops that you see right here. They're cast iron. These pieces fit together, non-stick inside. Came with a couple bags of lollipop sticks. I paid $3. I put it up at auction for $40 with free shipping and already have a bid on it so I probably made at least 30 on this so that was a really good purchase and those are apparently hard to find those lollipop molds so keep on the lookout for them then I went to a house um, in a retirement community they were having a community sale and I think they only have it every two years and I remember as soon as I walked into their garage I remember their garage. I remembered the couple because we had um, had a conversation two years before about buying and collecting and all that. Well, anyway, the lady remembered me, which I thought was crazy. And we were talking about buying collectibles and she apparently collects all kinds of things and she also sells on eBay, I think. I didn't tell her that I did. But she had dirt cheap prices on everything. I mean bargain basement. So I didn't haggle with her at all. There was no reason to. I don't haggle if the prices are fair. It, it, I think it's insulting so I just don't do it. If the prices are high I'll haggle but um, most of the time I don't do it very much. So anyway I had a whole boatload of stuff and it was gonna be or probably around twenty dollars. I think she gave it all to me for she gave it all to me for thirteen. So everything I'm about to show you cost me a total of thirteen dollars, and um, I should do pretty well. It it won't all sell immediately, but it should do well. Whoops! I keep tripping over this tripod. Um, but it pays, you know, to sometimes to not haggle and just to be nice and have conversations with people and you know things like that happen. 
So don't, you know, burn your bridges with people and if prices are fair, just pay it. <laughs> this is a hand painted good luck rooster from Portugal. It says made in Portugal. Um, apparently if you give this to someone as a gift, it should bring them good luck. So I got that. Um, I got this Lennox cross, but I didn't list it yet because I might put it up in my daughter's room. I got this little stinky cheese crock. This is from the Mary, is it Mary Mouse or something like that, um, collection from Holt Howard, 1959. Only bad thing is it was broken right here through the middle. But I still have a bunch of watchers on it, so I have it up for $9.99. This is Royal Worcester. Uh, I can't remember the pattern off the top of my head. Hold on, I'm looking for it. Okay, it's called Woodland. This is an egg coddler. I've sold a couple of these before. It's in really nice shape. So that might take a while, but it should sell eventually. This is just a little carved crystal piece. It's from Alfred Capridone, Capridoni. You can barely see it right there. But it's a little fawn in the woods. And I got another piece from Lennox. This is a little ceramic or bone china bell. It looks like a mound of snow with the little snowman on top. This is another crystal piece. This is from Crystal Sarmis or Sarmis Royal. The Swan Collection is from, I think it's out of Canada. This is an owl. I got this cute little footed or tri footed Nippon box see nip on down there. Only bad thing about this is the one leg was broken. But see what happens with that. Like I said, I paid $13 for all this stuff I'm showing you, so I know I'll make money on this somehow. Got this set of um, demi toss spoons. These are White Orchid by Community, um, which was made by Onita or Oneida, however you pronounce that. Brand new in the box from I think the 50s. Got this adorable little bowl. This is called Kitty Christmas from Fitz and Floyd. Oops. I think it's from the early 90s. This is just a little cat portrait. Bone China dish from Crown Staffordshire in England. This is another Harmony Kingdom piece I showed you guys one a few weeks ago. This one's called, I think, Catch, Catch of Catch Can or something like that. But it's supposed to be a cat going into the watering can and he's trying to get this mouse who is way at the bottom of the can. It's marked Harmony Kingdom with the sticker and it also has their logo right there and it's marked on the side with the artist's name somewhere oh there it is the artist's initials are here and I forget what else all those marks mean then I got this little guy. He's for me because I love vintage Christmas and I love elves and my husband and my son hate them. So whenever my son or my daughter and I find vintage Christmas elves, we buy them just to torture everyone else in the house. So he's mine. This is a Villaroy and Bach piece from their Fontainebleau collection. This is a covered sugar bowl. This is um, a hard to find piece in that pattern, which is a good thing. So I put it up for $50. And I do have a watcher on it, so we'll see what happens with that. Got a set of Pyrex bowls. This is the Homestead pattern. 
they're in okay shape, but like I said, I paid like nothing for them. There's just a little wear here and there on them. This is a Spode Christmas tree spill vase. I think that's what they call it. This is another Royal Worcester piece. I don't know what the pattern is, but it's got these daffodils on one side and this is Alpine on the other. And this is a toothpick holder, which I didn't know until I did some research. Um, I get a lot of questions like, you know, how do you know about this stuff? Research. I just keep looking stuff up until I get an answer <laughs> or I ask other people that I think might know what it is. This I think is another Royal Worcester piece. Yes, this is from the Eve Sham collection or pattern. This pattern is still being produced today but with this vegetable bowl, this lid with this flat handle on it I guess is the most rare. They made three or four of these same vegetable bowls with different handles on the lids. So, I put this up for 20 but This might take a while to sell since this pattern is still in production. And the last thing I got from there was this interesting thing. I don't know what this is. I thought it was a pitcher or a mug, but I'll tell you why I don't think it is that in a minute. I turned it over and it said, this is the Lennox Bleak mark. Um, so I knew right then and there it was an old piece, plus the fact that it's dated 1925. But it says W.V. Egbert Thomas Maddock, Newark Master Plumbers, Manasquan, New Jersey, August 29th, 1925. Um, so I tried and tried and tried to find any information I could on this. Could not find anything. So I listed it as a chamber pot since it came from a plumbing company. I thought maybe it was a chamber pot they gave out at a plumbing convention. I don't know. But I put chamber pot with a question mark behind it um, and then told everyone in my listing that I didn't know what this was for sure. If anyone knows, please let me know so that I can change the listing. Um, but you know, don't be afraid to list something if you don't know what it is. Just put a question mark behind it or put help in the title so people might help you with it um, and be honest and tell them you know here it is I don't exactly know what it is but bid on it right now I have five people watching this and I put it up for forty dollars so that was everything that I found at that one lady's house for thirteen bucks and I'm at eighteen minutes so I'm gonna come back and show you what I got this weekend so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in a few minutes